This is Charlie Parsons for Boxing Social in association with Forged Irish Stout and Empire Fight Store. Sky Nicholson, Tuesday evening. How are you, mate? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for making the time. I couldn't believe it when I WhatsApped you earlier. You were like, oh, yeah, still got to go to the gym, do this and do that. The <laughs> was, was literally like the week before. Um, you're straight back on it. No, to be fair, it was my first session back. Um and I was itching. I haven't punched since my fight until tonight. So it was good to be back. Hit the pads with Eddie and Al. Um, yeah, I needed it. It was good. What is it about you having fights and then in your post-fight photograph <laughs> just not looking like you had a fight? A <laughs> I don't get hit much, really, Parsons. Some life, eh? I don't, I don't know if I'd like boxing so much if I did. No, true. <laughs> Um, I suppose that's a great way to start then. You now reflect on that Lucy Wildheart fight, um, just how special. And also, you got that first knockout. Yeah, it was good. Um, I I don't know. Like, I love, I love the ring time and I love boxing. So I was having fun with it. But obviously, it wasn't like, it was good to get the stoppage and, like, show that I do have power as well. I heard her a few times in the fight. So, um it kind of silenced the doubters a little bit about me having power because I think that fight definitely showed that I do. And when I do sit down on my punches, I do have power, um, which is obviously something we've been working on developing um, coming over from the amateurs. So it was good to get the the stoppage win, but um, I kind of have always said that as well. Like, I don't like sound, sounding like a broken record, but I knew that as I faced better opponents, um, I would have better performances and there would be those openings and better opportunities for me as well. So that kind of showcased that, I thought. With that being said, afterwards, you still said to me, like, I still feel like there's even more that I'm sort of not showing in the fight. Are you able <laughs> to expand on that? Because that was a real sort of like, that was a step up. It was a real clinic. Like, it was, It's just frustrating. Like my team who see me in the gym every day know because they see it every day as well. Um but I'm not transferring everything from the gym to the ring yet. And I don't know if it's an experience thing or a time thing. Like obviously I've had nine fights in a year and a half, just over a year and a half. So um, like while I've had the rounds, it has been really close back to back as well. And I think those changes do take time um, and we're seeing them in the gym. So we get really excited and then I don't really transfer all of that into the fights yet. Um, so that is something that obviously is still a work in progress, but I think I'm showing a little bit more every fight. So I am happy with the progress and um, I think I'm going to keep showing more and more of, of what m me and my team see in the gym um, all the time. I think we're going to keep seeing more of that um, as my fights progress and as my opponents uh, get tougher as well. You talk about opponents getting tougher. Michaela Mayer went the distance on very short notice with Lucy Wildheart. Do you think that sort of, I know you can't compare and boxing doesn't always work in triangles and stuff like that, but when you like, sort of know how, how good Lucy is and how good she was always touted to be, and then she took that Mayer fight and it was on such short notice, she gave such a great account of herself, and then she went in with you. Now it's almost like you are bridging that gap now. <laughs> yeah, look. Um, for me, it's something I already knew. Styles make fights. Um, and I do have a style that is going to upset a lot of people that could have really good performances against other really good athletes. Um, but I, I know that my style is wrong for certain styles. And I knew that for Lucy as well. I knew that she was going to be tailor-made for me and I knew that I was going to be all wrong for her. Um, and she came out after the fight and said, oh, I, I wasn't myself. I, I know I'm much better than that. It's like, well, actually, no, I just make you like that. Like, I make people look silly. It's That's my style of boxing. It's what I do. And it's frustrating because I feel like I don't get credit sometimes because people think that I'm just fighting bums or fighting tomato cans or fighting shit people or people aren't having their best performances when they fight me. But actually... I make them look a lot worse than they are or how they would look against someone who stands and trades with them or has a different fighting style. Well, someone that you thought that your style would be well suited to was Amanda Serrano. News came in today, I believe, or, or I can't remember when it was late last night, that um, she will be, in fact, vacating her WBC title. The reason given, 
uh, is because the WBC won't support three minute rounds uh, for three twelves and that sort of thing. I mean, what's your immediate reaction of it? We know that that was a fight that sort of I know the championship belt's good and however you get it, but that was one that you were really gunning for, right? Yeah, I mean, it's a it's annoying and it's frustrating because obviously I really wanted that fight. Um, I've said I've been chasing this Rano fight for a while now. Um, I want to prove that I'm the best by beating the best. So it is frustrating. Um, we were uh, informed that my mandatory was going to be ordered today. So I assume she was given that same notification um, when she suddenly turned to social media and announced that she was vacating WBC for the reasons she gave. Um, I don't think it was a coincidence that it happened the day I was meant to be ordered as her mandatory. But, yeah, it's frustrating. I've um, I've asked my team um, to make sure that I'm not elevated to champion. I want my night in the ring. I want to win my world title in the ring. Um, I don't want an email world title. Um, I've made that very clear. So I think my next fight will be for the vacant WBC world title against whoever's next in line. Um, again, it's not what I wanted. I wanted to beat the best. Um, but I did all I could to to get myself into that position to make that happen. And uh, unfortunately, um, that's not going to happen now. I'm not going to say it's never going to happen. But for now, it looks like I'll fight for the vacant WBC title against whoever's next in line. I believe it's going to be Sarah Marfood and um, we'll wait for that order now. Um, so, yeah, it's annoying. But when I uh, tweeted today saying, as expected, um, I've been telling my team, I've been telling the people around me for months now that this was exactly how it was going to go and that a narrative was being shaped around the three minute rounds and everything else. She's had what, 45 fights over two minute rounds and all of a sudden now she will never fight two minute rounds again. Um, but I can almost bet my bottom dollar that she would crawl to Dublin for the Katie Taylor rematch and fight her over two minute rounds. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. Look, people are going to believe her narrative. I think a lot of people are seeing it for what it really is. Um, and look, I might not get to prove it in the ring right now. I know I can beat her. She obviously knows I can beat her. And um, we'll see what happens down the line. But for now, um, I'll focus on becoming WBC world champion in my next fight against whoever's the next best that they can put in front of me. And um, the quest for Undisputed will continue. Let me just sort of touch on a couple of things there. Obviously, you're now building the profile. It's not like you're sort of going into the fight without uh, anything. She has tweeted on, on multiple occasions that she's had other plans or, or stuff like that. Um, are you sort of a little bit disappointed about And what do you think the reason is? Because it's, it's hard to say, like, go out and say, like, oh, they're ducking me, whatever, when they've been as yeah. accomplished and done what they have. But well, it is weird to find like the, the the sort of reason behind it undisputed everyone wants to be undisputed right the wbc is saying they're going to support katie taylor um you say about her probably go she would go to croke park two minute rounds it's interesting right to be honest i feel like a few people have hit it hit the nail on the head today i've seen a few tweets about it it's one thing losing to katie taylor and um, going up in weight and, and fighting another undisputed champion. But she's got a lot more to lose, losing to an up-and-comer who she's kind of laughed off about fighting. Um, and she knows I have the style to beat her. Her team know I have the style to beat her. Uh, and I don't want to say she's ducking me, but I don't think she wants to take that risk um, this late in her career. And And I get it, but just say you don't want to fight me. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's not three. It's not the three minute rounds. Come on, come on now. Be real. But whatever, we'll see. We'll see what the future holds. Um, I can't do any more than I've done. I got myself into the position to be her mandatory challenger. Um, I beat the WBC number one in Perez. I beat the WBC number three in Lucy Wildheart in my last two fights. Um, and I got myself that shot, and I got myself into that position, and she's now vacated the belt. So it's annoying because I was in the top five across the board um, with all the bodies. And as soon as I won the, the interim title, it 
pushed me out of all the rankings in the other sanctioning bodies. So it's like starting again a little bit, but um, hopefully I can get myself into a position to, you know, fight for, for the other belts eventually. Do you believe one day this fight happens? I know it's hard. You know what? No. Oh. Because I think she's she's made it quite clear she's only going to have a few more fights. And if it wasn't now... Um, I don't, I don't see her fighting me down the line. Um, but I'm going to keep trying because it's for my legacy as well. Um, and I want to prove I'm the best. Finally, from me then, just sort of, I don't think I've ever actually sat and asked you this, but what is your <laughs> goal in boxing? And I think I'd ask you that off camera as well, because you know, people have like multiple weight world champion undisputed. What, what's your, what are you striving for? Well, you know what, like for me, as you know, and most people know, um, my goal in boxing was always the Olympic Games. So the pro scene's all been very new for me. And very quickly I realised, undisputed, it's, that's the pinnacle. Even it's like the Olympic Games of amateur boxing. The Olympic the Olympic gold in amateur boxing is like the undisputed champion in, in the pro rank. So for me, that became my goal very quickly. And in that time of me turning pro and having my first couple of fights, Serrano became undisputed. So obviously she became my target because that's my goal. It's nothing personal. It's never been personal. In fact, I'd, I'd probably get along great with her. I'm sure she's a nice girl, um, but this is business and this is my legacy. And this is my weight division, so. Finally, from me, um, when are you <laughs> next? Do you know twenty twenty four? You've been so busy. Uh, I <laughs> I still can't get my head around the fact that you've gone back to the gym. I thought you would have just allowed yourself like December to do your I thing. Know. Maybe that's just I, not you. Um, I had a lot of built up energy today with everything going on. I just had <laughs> yeah, to... true, true. Frustration. I called Eddie. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I was like, Ed. We got a punch card today. I need to be in the gym. Um, no, it felt really good. Uh, I actually, I really missed it. But um, it looks like March, April time, I'd say. I'll be out. So a nice little break over Christmas and New Year's and, and back in the gym, probably starting camp in January and um, gearing up for a massive 2024. Well, Sky, you do massive numbers now. You're turning into <laughs> the star. What's the final message to your fans and supporters watching back home? Um, honestly, I just have been overwhelmed, especially today with all of the people that have been very supportive of me, um, who, if you know, you know, um, we saw this coming anyway, but, um, the ones that, that can see it for what it really is and aren't just believing the narratives that are being put out there. Um, so yeah, thank you for all of the support. I see all of the messages and messages and comments and I really appreciate it. And I can't wait to, uh, start winning world titles. 2024 let's go let's go indeed sky nicholson thank you for speaking to us at boxing social thanks